Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Super exciting one for us today, yes. as today is also the launch of our Live Good Essential Oil Pack. It is now live on the website. So long awaited. Very, very, very exciting. Um, yes, definitely long awaited because we were hoping to have it before the holidays, but we're here. Um, so mo many of you have heard of and have also have a lot of experience and used essential oils. Um, you know, essential oils are the concentrated oils of beneficial plants. Okay, Ryan's going to go deep into the science behind it. Um, and then we're going to give you uh, suggested uses, how to properly dose them in what form you're using. Um, and I guess a little bit more of our personal experience with essential oils as well. Yeah, I think you're probably right, Lisa. We'll break it into two areas, right? One, one will say like sort of the science side of essential oils. And the second thing is the utility and how to use them, how to get the most out of them. I feel like similar to what Nodder sometimes says, I feel like I've sort of had ignorance on file fire <laughs> because you've been using essential oils around our family for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. And I've paid no attention to it. The only thing I will, will do is add a little bit of a breathe to my wrist before I go to sleep. But otherwise I do see you diffusing throughout the house but I've never really paid a lot of mind to it until recently, until right. Live Good decided to launch. And it honestly became such an eye-opening learning curve for me and so much fun and so much science because, wow, there is a lot There is a lot of validity to the use of essential oils. I mean, we we're talking, I don't know, three millennia, 3,000 plus years or more that I guess essential oils have been being isolated from plants. Um, I think they even said they opened up King Tut's tomb and they had the, the aroma of, the, uh, of, of lavender, but they did find oh. some essential oils. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. But I mean, we, we know that plants are medicine, right? I mean, we know that steroids and hormones and chemotherapeutic agents and pain relievers are, been, are, are derived out of plants. So we, we've known that forever. We know that food is medicine. We, Lisa and I will talk about that very often. And a lot of it has to do with the plants and the, the phytoactive compounds, the bioactive compounds that are in plants. I mean, there's so, so, so many of them. When it comes to essential oils, we're really talking about terpenes. There's that word, Lisa, terpenes. <laughs> terpenes are the primary constituent of the essential oil. There's like 30,000 different terpene compounds, but that's basically what gives it the aroma, the essence. And that's why they call them essential oils. It doesn't mean it's essential the same way amino acids are essential, where the body doesn't make them. You have to get them exogenously from your diet. No, essential in this case had to do just more to do with the essence of the plant, the, the aroma. Uh, the aromatic compounds that you smell, that, that 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 you can kind of sense and detect your olfactory bulb uses. So that's a lot of where that came from. They've even called it the, uh, you know, like air, wind, earth, fire, that whole thing, the elements. They said the fifth element of spirit. They've referred to it as essential oils being a spirit. But the technical aspect of that, that's actually not true. But still, it's kind of neat and fun to talk about. So Anyway, yeah, that's a little bit about the science. Here's what I really like about essential oils. I, I love the fact that these compounds are so involved in the biosynthesis of so many biological systems in our body. There's so many things that they do. But what's interesting is how do they accomplish that? So there's really kind of three great ways I was going to throw out to you real quick. The first and most obvious is the olfactory. Um, sense. So our sense of smell. So diffusing. Yeah. So diffusing or um, topical, really anything. No, diffusing, True. topical, True. put it into a spray bottle, using it direct, putting it in a bath, all the different things we'll talk about. But again, just the aroma, right? Just the, just the fact that we smell it. The olfactory bulb goes down the cranial nerve. It's like the shortest nerve, the shortest nerve. And it goes into the brain. And from there, it goes into the limbic system and it triggers all these different other body systems to react. And it's all due to a sense of smell. It can lower blood pressure. It can reduce stress. It can manage your inflammatory response. It can have something to do with your immune system, all just by smelling it. Which is why I think this is like the rabbit hole he went down when he started looking to essential oils because again, how long that I've so been fun. using them and he kind of pays no attention. I have a diffuser in every single room of our house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now like he's, is magically his eyes have like opened up and he's really understanding the powerful benefits of essential oils. Well, think about it, the volat volatility. It's a volatile oil, which means it's it's near a gas state, right? It's all it's, it's due to a high vapor pressure. It's sitting at rest. And that's why you can smell it so fast because it's really going from liquid to gas really very, very readily. Um, but yeah, so that's awesome. And it's also, they're, they're, they do not love water. It's hydrophobic. So they don't love water, which is another reason why they, cross cell cell walls and cell membranes so easily 
They have antimicrobial properties, so antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal. You'll hear us talk about things about mold in the house. If you live in Florida, it's freaking ubiquitous. It's almost everywhere. There's so much utility for oils. All right, but that was it. That was olfactory. Second thing is topical. So, so think about topical use. Um, you know, it, it can absorb across the cell membranes and cell walls. It can get through the skin. It has low molecular weight, which we've talked about in the past. I mean, I think around 300 Daltons, but think typically anything below 500 is accepted as going across. It's fat loving. So it does uh, go across cell membranes. So you will get some systemic absorption of essential oil into the bloodstream through topical application, which would really be transdermal, but that's tethered. So there's that aspect of it as well. And then also there's a the inhalation. So a lot of meds like the um, nebulizers, uh, inhalers, uh, there's a lot of factors, but ultimately these things are, we breathe in, they travel down our into our lungs, into what's called the alveolar. And there's a little thin membrane, it's only one cell thick. And that's where the diffusion layer is into the bloodstream. So you inhale and it's possible that you're getting a fair amount of absorption in the bloodstream just by inhaling um, which we'll talk about aromatically via diffuser, all the benefits of that as well. Um, particle size, again, matters. And again, it's just a neat, cool delivery system. Now, it's not quite as tightly controlled as pharmaceutical drugs are as via dosing. We, we don't really have any guidelines. And I think, Lisa, didn't you say there's no real board or agency that oversees dosing or sourcing right or i mean they are on the grass list which some are most generally most recognized as safe but again most they are. don't give you the proper dosing in the right form so yeah there's a lot but think about it. those those are three really cool ways the body responds reacts does its whole thing clinically efficacious uh therapeutic um is is just by breathing it olfactory topical application and by respiratory absorption through the lungs Right. So, pretty cool. Yes. Um, so I guess let's, before we go into the uses and whatnot, let's talk about purity, the potency, the testing. Oh, sure. Um, so I, I've actually had this question several times, so I'm going to address it first. Um, and it has to do with these labels of things. So um, food grade, therapeutic grade, aromatherapy grade, and um it's because of the way essential oils are regulated, there is no like legal we're term not, not. or not regulated. There's no like real legal term called therapeutic grade or food grade. Okay. Um, a lot of these- And yet we call it therapeutic grade. Yeah, but, but, but it, that's fine. Right. That's fine. There's no real recognized definition, but you have to understand this, that any pure, undiluted, unadulterated essential oil is naturally therapeutic or aromatherapy grade. That's the whole point That's of using that. Right. So while it's not like a label, like a USDA organic, uh, it still uh, defines what it's used for. And it really has to do with the purity and potency. So going to that, knowing that anybody can put that on their label, anybody can advertise that, anybody can market it like that, you really have to do your own due diligence and, and find out the, how things are properly tested. Yeah. Um, you need to understand that because, I mean, essential oils are everywhere. You can walk into any store and find an essential oil with some cool label and it looks great. They are not created equal. They probably won't give you the proper testing. They don't probably have that information, the way they source them. Um, it's not direct from the, you know, the, the source to the bottle. Um, so you have to know that. So you have to know your purity and your potency. And that's one thing where obviously it's, it goes with anything that we have in Live Good but we're it's one of the most important things for us. And that's why we love to give you all of the certificates of analysis, all the testing right there on our website. We don't want you to have to search for them, to ask for them. We want you to know everything. So Ryan will go into a little bit of how we sourced and how yeah. pure and potent and, are. And you're, you're spot on to say, I mean, counterfeiting and adulteration is um, is, is dishonest. It's, it's a breach of morals and ultimately it's unsafe for the consumer. Um, Speaking of real quick, unsafe, yeah. if you've ever heard about people having adverse reactions to essential oils, a lot of times it is those synthetic ones, those adulterated ones, because they have other additives in them that are actually can be toxic to you. They can be endocrine disruptors, you know, just mm -hmm. lots of things. So mm -hmm. you may have heard that so-and-so had a adverse reaction and it's probably something that's not pure. 
Yeah, I think dishonest marketing is a big is a big reason for it. Um, obviously, there's a significant cost with um, sourcing ethically sourced, uh, pure, undiluted essential oil, and that's what exactly what we have here. In Live Good is the pure, undiluted essential oils. Um, testing is is interesting. I did spend a lot of effort and time in that that department. Wanted to make sure. So, if if for those of you that have followed along, before we were trying to launch, we had a snag because we failed some testing. And in that example, it failed the ISO spec in Australia, our tea tree, it, our tea tree, tea tree failed the ISO spec from Australia, which is where you, we source the tea tree leaves from. Uh, it was it was shown as a Chinese tea tree, which it's a common maneuver or tactic for some of these unscrupulous brands. Uh, and then the other one was a de that was our peppermint, it was a demethylized, it looked like corn mint, had this weird funky, characteristics to it. So we had to fail that one as well. So when you have a chance on the website now, it, it, are the certificates of it not, they're not COAs, they're testing. It's, and the testing, there's only like really two main people that are capable of testing and getting extremely detailed um, into it to ensure that we are not, we don't have any contaminants. And when you go through, you'll see the test and you'll see the word terpene again, show up a lot of different, well, not in different places, but you'll definitely see what's in every single oil. So super important. Very proud of that. Um, yeah. And that's, yeah, I think from a consumer perspective, that's what you guys want to see. And that's right. What so a lot of times when also asked the questions, how do we compare to, and we always, the top brands that, you know, we have Dutera, Young Living. I mean, we are directly comparable guys. We do all the same testing for purity and potency. We literally have source our source to our bottle. I mean, mm -hmm. all the same stuff, but again, our prices are amazing. Yeah, that's so right. that's where we really differ, um, obviously. Uh, so let's talk about Live Goods products. I was going to say, let's right, get let's into it. the exciting part of it. You guys have all here waiting for us. So I'm going to I'm gonna like, well, let's just say I'm going to say a cute little box. Um, it's also magnetic in the front. Um, so great little um, organizational toolkit. Okay, so we do have, I'll just go through our immunity, I mean, our blends, excuse me. And these are all 15 milliliters. Okay, I get that mm -hmm. question often too. Yep. These are all 15 mLs. We have our immunity blend. Ryan, what's in the immunity blend? Name uh, five. Yeah, so clove, cinnamon, orange, uh, eucalyptus, and rosemary. Amazing. Um, lemon, tea tree, peppermint, which is crooked in there, um, lavender, and frankincense. So all of these, um, what is the member price I just... Uh, member price, crazy forty nine ninety five. Oh wow, yeah, right, forty nine ninety five for. I'm gonna pull it up on the website because we just launched it, and I'll give you the non member price as well. Um. Okay, so going through our oils, do you want to go through? Well, let's talk about the you. You kind of talked about the uses, right? So let's just say. Oh, the different ways. Yeah, different ways to use. Okay. okay. There are three different ways to use, but two of them are the ones that we're really going to talk about. Because the third one, we really advise you to be working with like a well versed. Um, you know, know what you're doing. Well. Yes. Yeah. You either be well versed or working with someone that's well versed in essential oils. That, um, but for most part, it's the aromatherapy part. Okay, you put it in your diffuser. Um, easy enough adding five to 10 drops of your essential oil into the diffuser and it diffuses into your home. Now I have many different sizes of, um, of diffusers. Like one of mine is very big. So I'm obviously going to add personally, I'm going to add 15 drops to that because it carries a lot more, um, a lot more water. So you also just make your discretion based on size of your diffuser. We will have, we will have a diffuser. Yes. We don't have one now. So for those that you are looking, look for something that is, it doesn't have to be huge, 100 ml. Um, most of them are made of plastic, but if, they, if you're going to choose plastic, make sure you use BPA free plastic. Uh, a timer is helpful so that it automat automatically shuts off. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Well, I mean, before, you, but they yeah, make you, some, they make some with like with reeds in them. Um, which is fine. Uh, you don't have to but, plug them in or anything, but what happens is you have to change the reed often. Yeah. So once it kind of absorbs all that oil and goes out, I mean, it doesn't last all that long. So definitely one that you need to plug in, but again, we're going to have one. Yep. We're going to have one. Um, another way it has Ryan spoke about is spraying. Mm -hmm. um, so I order a bunch of stuff off of Amazon and you always want to make sure you're in like a dark glass bottle to prevent that UV, to protect it from the UV. Right. So this is a little spray thing. Okay. So I just take some of the essential oils and, you know, I'll dilute 
So you, your dilution, though, this can apply to topical too, but if you're looking for a one, a two, three, five, 10% dilution, 10 being more concentrated, if you base it on a teaspoon, that's 10 drops per teaspoon for 10%, five drops per teaspoon of oil or water for 5% and so on. Okay. That, I hope that helps you. Yep. So filling into a spray bottle, spraying the room, great for the lavender. And I will say too, there's easy ways to get it in. I have some of the stuff uh, that you buy on Amazon comes like a little plunger that literally will just help you draw all the oil out in a mini funnel. Yeah. <laughs> you can put it all right in. I mean, they come as kits. So um, just another way that you could use it, you know, aromatherapy wise. Um, and then topically. And then topically. Right. So this is also where it really comes into play how Ryan was talking about the dilution. I know you can use it both ways, but topically you do want to be careful with essential oils because especially some of them are like almost termed like hot essential oils. Like I'm After just going to give an example. Things. We don't have it here, but oregano, like if you were to put oregano on, you're just going to actually burn you. Um, so you want to be careful with that. And also everybody's skin and areas are different. Sure. So to help prevent any irritation, you want to use a carrier oil. So when Ryan was talking about the dilute to like the, a teaspoon, um, that's a teaspoon of the carrier oil. Fractionated coconut oil is my favorite, but you can also use Jehovah oil, olive oil, almond oil, almond oil, other things that are also super hydrating for your skin. You know, you get and, dual benefit there. And I think some oils do better in different carrier oils. Okay. Or I mean, I think, yeah, so, so some essentials should be used. Like I think tea tree should be in Jojoba, but like, again, there's a lot of personal preference. There's some science behind it too. So um, we are not aromatherapists, <laughs> so uh, we're not really well-educated in that, but we've definitely used the wheels a lot. And as you can tell, we're becoming very passionate about it and making sure that we're doing it in a safe and, uh, yeah, yeah safe and effective yeah, way. Safe and, effective and way. so here's another one you can get. It's a roller. So the rolling, oh, nice. um, head pops out. That's awesome. Yeah. And you can make it. So this is a great one. I'm just going to use lavender, for example, for before bed. So you make your sure. little um lavender roller you put the fractionated coconut oil or whatever carrier oil you're going to use right and then we'll give you some tips of where you can rub it rubbing it you know on your wrist or whatnot um or just again smelling it so another way yes topically um and i guess while we're talking about topically i'll just tell you some good placement spots the wrist behind the neck um behind the ears the navel um i also temples like sometimes. temples I also like on the inside of um, the feet. The reason I do that almost like the inside of the ankle area is because it's rarely touched. So a lot of times if I'm using something before I'm going to bed, like put it down there and I know it's not really gonna touch um, touch much. Hmm. And, and then what I was talking about is the third one is orally. But again, this should only be used orally, only some of them as well. If you have experience with essential oils, or if you're working with someone that's well versed in essential oils, or you follow someone, a certified oil therapist that gives the proper dosing of it. Dosing. Um, yeah. And I think the same thing that goes, I'm just going to throw it out there now because I get the question already with the kids and pets. So, same thing, work with someone that is well versed with essential oils when in regards to vet, veterinarian that's well versed with essential oils. And just know, like, in your home, diffusing should be no different for your, your your children and your animals. It should just be as safe as long as you're using a pure essential oil. Um, now, when it comes to more topically and orally, that's a totally different ballgame. I wonder what the dogs think with the, the powerful olfactory senses that they have. <laughs> right. I mean, the article I was reading today was actually Water. pretty cool. How like, you know, how well dogs actually respond to it. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, to talk to our oily vet fan, friend and see what, yes, see have, what we know yes, about. Yes, we, uh, we have an affiliate that's the oily, that's known awesome. as the oily vet. Great. Um, what else do I, oh, and I also have other, just other things you can get off of Amazon. These are little minis and the lid just pops open. And so this means you can take your oils, you know, everywhere. I know these aren't huge, but say you were traveling and you wanted to take all the oils with you, then you just take six of these guys. I had no idea we had all this stuff, right? That's <laughs> see, a, ignorance stuff. on fire. <laughs> It's perfect. Good stuff. Okay. So what about some of the uses of these oils? Let's get into those. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. You want to start with the Well, oils? I have it in order just the okay. way it's going to go up on the website right. too is lemon. So okay. limon is lemon. Yep. Let's do it. Obviously, you guys, you know, well, this comes from um cold cold pressing. So it's not through distillation like the other oils are, but um direct from the rind. 
Uh, so good. Yeah, it smells <laughs> amazing. And just like you would expect, I mean, what are you going to do with lemon? Well, it's refreshing. It's invigorating. Um, I think a lot of times it's used for bad odor, malodors. So things like you can put it in a cotton ball and put it into an area that doesn't smell good. It could be a bathroom, right? It could mm -hmm. be in the back of a refrigerator. Right. Right. Laundry. Laundry. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'll just read you some of the things that I that I put up on here. But so diffusing again, like five drops. If you're using a hundred ml diffuser, so five drops, five to ten drops, you can just diffuse it. Um, can increase lift, lift mood, improve job performance. The cotton ball thing I told you about. There's a cleaning. You can use it for cleaning. Add it to your cleaners, and um, you can add a few gym, drops to your gym laundry, like Lisa said. But again, hundreds, if not, no, there's thousands of different ways to use oil. So there's no way we can cover all that. We're never going to be able to, but we will provide content through social media. We'll continue to post stuff and, and hopefully you guys can find a good reputable source through Google too right. as well. And after Ryan goes through all these, I'll give you some of like my just favorite uses of these. Well, you want to just kind of chime in as we're going. That okay, way well, the lemon, using. the lemon, I love. Okay, so I've been using essential oils for a very long time. So I do put a drop in my water. Okay, so that's kind of like my, my lemon water. Um, very good. I also love to diffuse it with peppermint because mm -hmm. it actually, um, peppermint has like an uplifting mood. So it can kind of help you waken up. Yeah. Um, so I like putting the two together because it's a very fresh awakening scent. And like Ryan said, in cleaners, like I use amber bottles and make my own cleaner and the, the fresh lemon scent, I mean, is, is always delicious, necessary. <laughs> so those are my favorite lemon. All right. Awesome. All right. So next up was lavender stress, sleep, uh, mood. A lot has to do with mood. Like I wish our 11 year old was here. She was going to come on and show you how she makes her spray bottle. And she's yeah. got, she's just walking around many times in the house, just, <laughs> just spraying, but mostly on her bed. She'll use it on her sheets, which is great. I, I absolutely love that. You can apply topically direct to behind your ears, on your temples, behind your, on, on your wrist folds. Um, I use lavender. I, I absolutely love it. Um, as a natural perfume, you can actually apply it topically mm -hmm. as a natural perfume. It's excellent for do-it-yourself recipes. There's probably, I mean, just again, so many different recipes online from household cleaning yeah. to de-stressing to mood to a lot of, yeah. right? And lavender and lemon also go really well together. So you'll kind of find your blends that you you liked. And I just, I mix scents all the time and just kind of see what, you know, freshens up the, the home. But lavender, again, this roller is perfect for lavender because I love to put it at my wrist, smell it. Um, I also like the lavender above the navel. Mm just re you know really good placements and um like Ryan said sleep it's very that's my preferred use for it but also any times of stress or if my house is kind of a little too too active I might start putting it in the diffusers <laughs> everywhere just to tone it down a bit yeah, so I mean good. there's so many so many uses it's great stuff lavender is awesome and it's also um that can be known as like if you want to call it like your red oil so anything that you think is like red like your you're angry or you're frustrated or, you know, it's calming. So I think a red moon. Oh, I forgot to say lavender is from uh, Bulgaria too. And it's part of it. It's just, it's just distilled. And this one right. will be on the website. Yeah, of yeah. course. Of course. And we'll, I'll try, we'll try to move through it fast. I know we've already gone 23 minutes. So let's try to get through okay. it fast. Go. Tea, tea tree oil is up next, Lisa. Okay. Tea tree oil. Well, I mean, five drops in a diffuser. Yes. You know, that's for, for a great refresh space. This is one of those ones that's great for air quality, indoor air quality. Um, yeah, it's also, I mean, because of its antibacterial benefit, that's mm -hmm. the one I love to use with gym clothes. So I'll put some drops mm -hmm. straight into uh, the laundry or any like sports clothing, any like really dirty laundry. So you got someone's a fisherman and you got the fishy stink on, um, you know, clothing really helps there. Um, also speaking of laundry, you can get the wool dryer balls and that's what I use. You know, we don't use fabric softeners or anything like that with scents because they're not good for you. So I have dryer balls go online, Amazon wool dryer balls. And I just put like that's maybe a, a few drops onto each dryer ball when I throw it in there. So tea tree oil is really great for that. Um, it's been well known for use because of the antibacterial and fungal for um, athlete's foot for nail fungus, oh, ringworm, nail ringworm. fungus. I mean, yeah, even for warts. That's warts. Quite, a, for quite a bit for warts, and that's actually applying it directly using a cotton swab. Right. That's not through a dilution, I don't believe. Um, insect bites. <laughs> you know, but, there's so many uses. But tea tree should be applied almost always with a carrier yeah. oil, um, just because of again some of the sensitivities that can occur. Um, and going back to lemon too, sometimes you can get a photosensitivity if you're using it directly on the skin. So just be cautious of that. If your skin kind of heats up and gets a superficial rash, that could be just part of that photosensitivity reaction. But with tea tree too, I don't think you're supposed to consume it orally. 
Right. Is, that, is that the one we were talking about? Yes. Where you, if you had it in a mouthwash, it's designed to be spit out. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and obviously putting it in a mouthwash is the, the antibacterial properties of it, but right. making sure you know you're not not, you're not ingesting it. Okay. Yeah, and tea tree we mentioned is from Australia, so on the from the leaves. All right. So next up, Lisa, is the peppermint. Ooh, lots of so many so many amazing uses with peppermint. It's unbelievable. Right. I mean, you know, peppermint. We all love peppermint. Right. Because, but again. I like it in a diffuser because it's awakening. So maybe it's a great thing to have in an office. An office space. Yeah. Really keeps your, your um, you alert. Uh, you can put it little dabs of the carrier oil behind your ears. Um, I would not advise the temple. I did do that to Ryan once. Okay. It's a little, it can be a little I, strong. Yeah, just so it just, you know, it just depends on how much you use. I like to use it for myself orally as like a, a breath mint. So just make sure it's like, I make sure it's only one drop because it is powerful. I mean, powerful, powerful. Um, what are Yeah. Says it's still streaming on YouTube. Sorry about okay, that, guys. What happened? It just went away. But we were just talking about peppermint. So leave right off. I gave my uses and let's do your uses. All right. Yeah. So, okay. That was for peppermint. So diffuse five drops again, multitude of benefits, including sinus allergy relief, improved focus, concentration. Um, also muscle pain, aches, headache, one to two drops behind the ears. Be careful with the temples. Like Lisa said, fresh and breath, one drop on the tongue. Oral borderline, yes, but it is very, very nice for refreshing the, freshening the breath. Let's go on to frankincense, Lisa. I know this is one that many, many people love. I mean, love. this is like the king this of from oils. from India, <laughs> by the way. This is Boswellia serrata. This is out of India. But this is a king, for sure, for a state of relaxation. Or what else? What else, Lisa? Well, my, I mean, my favorite, I talk about the skin health benefits. So putting it with a little bit of carrier oil, or if you use a facial oil, um, putting a couple, putting a drop into with your facial oil, and it helps with fine lines, wrinkles, dark spots, um, tightening. I mean, amazing, amazing stuff. So soothing to the skin, promoting cellular health, stimulates the immune system. Um, I mean, it talks about having, have, having anti-tumor, anti anti-seizure properties. I mean, it's just such a great way to add it to any health regimen, um, aromatically, um, you know, topically, and it only in, certain circumstances orally, but again, those are, need to be well-versed in oils for that. Yeah, I was surprised by how much of the skincare of frankincense is good for, you know, mm -hmm. from the acne blemishes and the dark spots, which I'm starting to pick up too, just kind of those age spots. So an incredible, yeah. incredible oil. It's unbelievable. Yeah. All right, and then the last one was the immunity blend. So yeah. we talked about what's in the immunity blend. Again, clove, cinnamon, orange, eucalyptus, and rosemary. Now, this and, is something I have going in our house like all, all, the, time all the time because especially during your so-called, you know, cold and flu season. But when I know like a bunch of kids are sick in my children's classes, I mean, I just all about prevention. Right. So I will I'm, honestly, when my kids are like walking out the door, I'll put a little bit mix in the carry oil behind <laughs> their neck. I mean, they think I'm crazy. I'm trying to always put essential oils on them. But really the immunity, you, the immunity blend is so good at protecting yourself and boosting your immune system. So always diffusing it in the home just for like that clean, pure immu immunity boost. For sure, for sure. Yeah. That's our six pack. They are only available in a pack at this time. Uh, we will continue to evaluate and look to add on more oils in the future and possibly go into singles. But right now this sure. is the way that it's available. And like I said, $49.95 for members, $69.95 for non-members, regardless, amazing, amazing deal. Um, and yes, like Ryan said, cause I do get the, a lot of questions are we going to have this oil and that oil? 
this is the beginning. And as you guys know, with Live Good, we always plan to grow as we grow, adding more products. So um, yeah, any I questions? That there were, there were in? a bunch, but actually because we dropped off the Zoom for whatever oh, reason, we, we lost them all. So sorry uh, about that, guys. I know there's a lot of questions we were going to try to get to. Right. But and we'll give you, you know, they'll, they'll always be like on the website, we'll have some suggested uses, but we're not going to give you an entire list of all the uses, guys, because the, the list is kind of endless. So um, I can always recommend some oil therapists to follow on social media that you can always see how they use them. Like Ryan said, there's a tremendous amount of recipes um, for making your own cleaning products, making your own deodorant. I mean, all kinds of stuff using essential oils. I will post my mouthwash because I've already been asked for that since I mentioned it on Friday's call. Um, great stuff. So yeah, many, many uses, always here to help. So if you have questions about them, comments, if your question did not get answered because we dropped off, just please go ahead and email those. All right, that's it for us, guys. Have a right. great rest of your Monday. Super productive. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.